So when defining consciousness, it's important that we frame it in a way that enables us to distinguish between a normal waking consciousness and an altered state. So therefore, we define it as a level of awareness of our internal state and our external environment. So therefore, when we have a loss of awareness of our internal state and our external environment, that's when we're in an altered state of consciousness, such as your daydreaming, meditation, sleep, etc. So it includes awareness of your sensations, perceptions, thoughts, feelings, and memories, spot FM, I'll say it again, sensations, perceptions, thoughts, feelings, and memory. So again, when we have a loss of awareness of those, that is an indication that we're in an ASC. Consciousness is a psychological or a hypothetical construct. There is no single device or psychological observation that we can use to definitively state that you are in an ASC. So in other words, there's no d device that can actually gauge what percentage of consciousness I am right now, or you, if you're listening to this. So therefore, we have to infer it based on either physiological measures, such as an EEG, heart rate, etc., or psychological characteristics, such as your level of self-control, time orientation, etc. And I have um, covered this in another clip on this channel. In terms of the mind-body problem posed by the ancient Greeks, they argued that they're two distinct entities, the mind being spiritual, intangible, in other words, you can't touch it, with the body being tangible, fleshy, finite, etc. It was Descartes who derived the notion of dualism, which explained how the mind and the body interact through the brain structure, the pineal gland, which is therefore our centre of consciousness, which enables the body to affect the mind and the mind to affect the body. So in other words, enabled emotions generated by our fleshy heart to influence our spiritual mind, again, through the pineal gland. So according to Descartes, consciousness exists in the mind and the body and encompasses everything we are aware of, including our own existence, as indicated by his tag, cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. So in terms of James' streams of consciousness, where he likened consciousness to the water flow of a stream, it's important to identify the four descriptors. So number one, consciousness is continuous. So even when we're in an altered state, there is still a degree of consciousness. It's personal. So what's in my consciousness, what I'm thinking is different to what you are thinking in your consciousness. Third, it's changing in terms of our thoughts and perceptions, change from internal to external stimuli. And it's selective in terms of what we choose to attend to.